fresh out of the ground, precious stones of all colors by the dozens. 40% of the Earth's sapphires are said to come from this deposit in southern Madagascar, discovered 20 years ago. We came across the big deposit, and everyone started to come from all over the country to dig and try to find sapphires. 40,000 people work in these mines today, and the Malagasy state turns a blind eye to work conditions. It's a deposit that holds a considerable treasure, but one which the country has a hard time taking full advantage of. Jocelyn Maka was a peasant who abandoned his fields three years ago to come dig. Hi, how are you? I'm okay. The mine's still productive? Yes, it continues to. With his colleagues, Maka started on this hole just five days ago. It is already six meters deep. Slowly, slowly. Each descent is a dangerous endeavor. Once at the bottom, several tunnels shoot off in different directions, so narrow you have to crawl to move there. I'm going there. My friend's in this other tunnel, just over that way. It means we're following the same mine. At this part we won't touch, because otherwise everything will collapse. We're always bending over, because the tunnels are really small. We could work better if the space was bigger, but it's dangerous to remove the ground. It's complicated. Using iron bars, the miners break up the earth and take on all these risks. Yes, take this pile. There could be sapphires in it. Once back at the surface, miners sift through their bags of rubble. This is the moment of truth. Among all these pebbles, sometimes there are stones that give them hope. It's still a sapphire, even if it's very small. This stone will not bring him more than five euros. It is too small, like the vast majority of sapphires here. I never lose hope. I haven't found a better job than this. If I find a beautiful sapphire, you know, my buyer will give me a lot of money. I could buy a motorcycle, gifts. I'll be rich. When they find a stone, miners go 50 kilometers away to Ilakak, a town that sprang up barely 20 years ago. At every corner, sapphire buyers wait at their counters. All come from abroad. <laughs> like this Sri Lankan trader. All type of sapphires we can get from here, and uh, one of the best place. Even small stone or even a big stone, it doesn't matter. Uh, we buy sapphires, we uh, get from here, and uh, we send to Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka and Thailand are the historical centers of the sapphire trade. There, once carved, the stones will see their value multiplied by 10, while the Malagasy miners get only the price of the rough stone. In Ilakak, Mark Novira and Guillaume Subira are the only ones working differently, not exporting the sapphires they buy. These Swiss and French traders have been living in the city for about 20 years. It's not too flat. We can cut a small round of four millimeters. It's a pretty stone, so I'll buy it. He seeks only the purest stones. OK, 50 euros. What, you don't like money? <laughs> to carve them in Ilakak. We buy raw at the source, carve and turn them into jewelry on the spot. And there is a profit with each of those stages. The goal is to keep all the added value in Madagascar. And for that, he's trained two carvers, whom he's been working with for five years. Yeah, they are very proud to have mastered this job. There are very few Malagasy who have enough funds to compete with foreigners. More training needs to be done around sapphire crafts so that we can take advantage of it, so that Madagascar finally receives the true value of its sapphires. Once cut and mounted in jewelry, sapphires are sold on site here, mostly to passing tourists. In Ilakak, this shop is an exception, one of the only ones to allow Madagascar to enjoy a little more of its treasure.